All right, so as you guys can see, real foggy day. That's the shoreline over there, and uh, I can almost barely see the edges of it about 100 yards out. So crazy fog. I do believe these fish are gonna be able to see everything today because the water's super clear. Uh, the sun's not gonna be beating down on them because of this fog. So they should be able to see these top waters, but I probably will start fishing these soft plastics a little bit earlier. I didn't realize it was gonna be this clear out. And uh, as that sun comes out, and it is gonna kind of light up some of this fog, I think that the soft plastics will actually be the ticket to get more fish. Um, I do I do think the fish are going to cooperate on top waters, but I think that uh, the soft plastics will get the job done early on as well. So let's go ahead and jump in. There we go. There's one right there. Decent one too. Nice. I think it's a trout. Boat's right there. <laughs> Could be a small red. I'd really like for it to be a trout. I think it is. Yes. Not a bad trout right there. Right there early on the super spook. Smashed it. Bye bye Mr. Trout. Alright, we can see a bunch of slicks out here. So, trout's on the board. That's really good. That's exactly what I came over here to do. I'd like to see if I can pick up a bigger one. Uh, but there should still be some redfish hanging around. If I want to go catch them, I know I'm going to need to move shallower. But seeing a lot of bait, seeing a lot of slicks over here, and that to me indicates trout activity. A little bit deeper zone uh, where we're going to see these trout as opposed to the redfish that are going to be hanging real shallow. The really big trout are going to be over here, but I'm just kind of, I literally just got out of my boat. So this was just my first area to go work, but I'm going to keep kind of pushing around down the shoreline. Oh, turned my head, wasn't paying attention. No monster here, but decent little trout. Come here, pal. <laughs> Whoa, quick release. This boat kind of cut me off. I'm a little, uh, a little left at, uh, the mercy of just kind of moving in shallower because I can't move out deeper. Um, I guess that's a guide with his clients and he just kind of rolled up. Alrighty, so I'm at spot number two. Um, first spot I went to, got those trout on top water. That was pretty good, but uh, my wade kind of got cut off a little bit. Um, so I'm just going to the next spot. Wasn't really seeing too much more activity. The, the main area I wanted to target was the area that kind of got cut off. Uh, but I'm going to see if I can pick up some flounder along this edge. There's a lot of different structure over here. And then I'm going to move along the edge of that flat. See if any of those drains coming off it have flounder sitting in them. So just kind of going to work a U around here and see what I can find. Look at these black drum here in front of me. See all those guys? That was pretty crazy. Huh. They were hovering a little high. This is like five feet deep and they're sitting on top. It's pretty wild. So I'm using this voodoo shrimp right now because it's got that weighted uh, jig head right on the front. I can't find any of my other jig heads, otherwise I'd be using the power prawns that I brought with me. And uh, I'm just after these flounder right now, so I know I need to stay really close to the bottom. I have some weedless hooks, uh, but they're not front weighted, so I, I would have a really kind of tough time making sure that I stay in that strike zone for these flounder. So for that reason, that's why I'm using this little voodoo shrimp here. So I made my way down that shoreline, nothing really occurred. So I'm gonna start moving towards the edge of this flat, kind of feeling out all these drains coming off and see if I can't find something here. There we go. Oh, that was a really nice trout there. Goodness gracious, that stinks. It was a good trout.
There we go. That's a good fish. Oh, came off. I want to say that was a flounder. Goodness gracious. Felt like a flounder. Man, that is rough. Here we go. Really nice trout. Boy, some structure around here that I don't want to get into. Eh, not a monster, but it's a trout. Hello, <sighs> guy. Redfish right there. Spooked him a little too close, unfortunately. Sitting again on top of one of these oyster bars. And I gotta say that one of the best ways to find fish in the winter is to locate those oyster bars. They stay warm, they house a lot of bait, and fish tend to hang close to them because they're the first thing that warms up and they can get some easy food on them. So if you're never really sure where to start looking, Use those oyster bars. They're kind of like space heaters for these fish. In the winter time, there we go. There's that red. <laughs> I think that was that same red I just saw. That is funny. I didn't think I was gonna get him. He spooked off, but uh, I cannot tell you guys how consistent oyster bars can be for solid action in the winter. And you guys are seeing it right here. Nice little red. Get this guy up. Oh, come get out of that structure. Get out of that structure. Get out. He's trying to get under that structure right there. There's a bunch of oyster and old stuff down in the water. Oh, no. No. Well, good news is confirmed that there's a feeding fish over in this area with that trout and this red. But I'm really looking for the flounder that's over here. That stinks. I lost that red fish, though. Sitting here fishing these drains. I've had a hookup. <clears throat> and uh, I'm now getting cut off again. Just so many people out on the water today that I guess don't know a whole lot of fishing etiquette. So I'm gonna have to shoot out around over here. All right, I think I finally got my flounder. Yep, there it is. That is a flounder, my friends. This is what I've been fighting for all morning. Oh, I gotta be careful with them because they're great at throwing the hook. Come here, little buddy. Oh, gotta be careful, gotta be careful. Ah! Got him. That is what we were looking for this whole time. Nice little flounder. See, I had to move further in on this drain to get this guy because he's closer to the shallow flats. I spent a lot of time sticking to the edges and uh, I think the ticket here was the fact that I, whoop. well, there he goes. That's a quick release. But uh, the ticket here was getting real close to this flat. He was sitting literally right as it dumps off here textbook flounder location to be kind of hanging out so now we've got our trout we've got our flounder i did not red land that red earlier so i gotta go now and uh find my redfish spot it was a grind for these flounder but uh now that i got one i think i'm done trying to go after these guys well that's no good all right, so I went to pull the cord that releases the bracket on my trolling motor. I uh, unfortunately snapped the, the rope. This is a freshwater trolling motor, 
So uh, unfortunately, I think it's uh, it's about on its last leg. But I don't want to stray too far from home now because I'm kind of restricted to having to get it out and uh, actually manually screw this thing in um, because I, I cannot lift it up and take it out. Uh, so I don't want to run all the way down. To so I'm going to come back to this area that I was fishing earlier this morning. Uh, I mentioned that drain in the pre-trip plan, uh, the, the trough that runs along the edge of this shoreline. And I'm going to try and work it real fast. It's a little later in the day. I don't know exactly if those fish stay deep or they move shallow. The tide has risen. So I'm going to kind of just feel the shoreline out really quickly on the trolling motor. If I have issues with it, I can jump out and wade, which is again why I'm going to stay a little bit over in this area instead of going all the way down. Um, but let's see if we can find that final red to get the slam. Got him. Man, I watched him blow up on a shrimp. And I just cast it in his direction and there he was. Nice red here. That was just about as textbook as it gets. All right. That just was a dead giveaway. There's a redfish in the area. And it's a pretty solid size one too. I don't know if you guys heard that giant explosion from him, but uh, it's a it's a good red. Oh no, he threw the hook. You gotta be kidding me. Oh man. That just stinks. I watched him eat that. He came up and ate it. I was pretty much done with that retrieve. This is a good red. All right. I should have this one pretty nailed. Come on, buddy. There he is. Let me land you and finish my slam. a good fish right here. I've got him pretty pretty stuck. Oi! Oi! Oh, finally got my red to finish the slam and it's a doozy of a fish. I'm happy with that one, I'll tell you what. So uh man, slam complete, solid red on the board, flounder trout as well. I'd say it was a pretty good day of fishing. Alrighty guys, I'm back at the house. Just wrapped up the day of fishing. I hope you guys enjoyed the video of me catching the slam for New Year's. We've got a lot more information at the Insider Club. In fact, I give a full map analysis of the areas that I was fishing in this report, as well as some more advanced tactics that I'm not gonna be sharing in this video. But if you guys wanna see all that stuff, head on over to saltstrong.com. We've got a lot of great info over there. And if you're new to Salt Strong, just know that we're the number one online fishing club in America because we actually guarantee we're going to help you find and catch more fish, save money on tackle, and make friends fast. Or it's free. So we hope to see you in the Salt Strong Insider Club soon, and thanks again for watching.